why Eric Ten Hag should continue with his old 4-2-3-1 for now. Welcome back to the Premier League review. I'm Statman Dave. If you are new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like the video. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about formations, but also diving into set pieces. Eric Ten Hag's Manchester United have started the season in pretty poor form, and after six minutes against Nottingham Forest, they found themselves two goals down. But instead of the doom and gloom of previous games, Manchester United played really really well against Nottingham Forest after taking that two-goal deficit early doors. I think the return to the 4-2-3-1 is a big part of that. Having a two-man base in midfield of Christian Eriksen or Diogo Delo allowed United to really play through the Nottingham Forest press. If we take a look at the average positions just from a basic level, number one, the line is a lot higher. The pressure was on Nottingham Forest. United, in a defensive sense, were much better at winning the ball back high. But also in terms of Casemiro's position, um, you know, was at times in between the centre-backs, at other times was sitting in defensive midfield, but being joined by another body, be it Bruno Fernandes, Christian Eriksen or Diogo Delo. This allowed Manchester United to be much better in possession and allowing them to play through the lines. In fact, if we take a look at the progressive stats in this game versus the game against Wolverhampton Wanderers, there is a stark contrast. In the game against Wolverhampton Wanderers, Manchester United completed 50 progressive passes. In comparison, against Nottingham Forest, Forest, it was 76. We're seeing over a 50% increase. And when we're looking at the players that are playing the most progressive passes, Bruno Fernandes with 11 against Wolverhampton Wanderers and Casemiro with 10. Where I sort of brought up the real issue for Manchester United in this game especially was both Aaron Wan-Bissaka with three progressive passes and of course uh, Raphael Varane with a single progressive pass. These are two players that had a lot of possession of the football and teams were starting to force United down the right-hand side of the pitch. But I do think, as I mentioned in the game or in the analysis after the game, that having a defensive midfielder dropping into either the defensive or that midfield line would help United progress the ball, which is a stark contrast to the numbers against Nottingham Forest. If we take a look at the most progressive passes, Casemiro is 16, but the most impressive bit about this game and why the 4-2-3-1 is the way to go to be able to play through teams having a double pivot at the base is the statistics of not only Rafael Varane but also Wan-Bissaka. Varane with eight progressive passes in just 45 minutes and Aaron Wan-Bissaka with nine massive improvements. That comes from the shape, that comes from the ability to move around the ball, to rotate positions and I just feel this 4-2-3-1 base at the moment is the way United need to go. But I also feel from an attacking perspective having more passes completed into the opponent's half means that not, not only is Marcus Rashford going to get more of the ball but same with Anthony and Marcus Rashford returning to the left wing is a humongous reason why they beat Nottingham Forest he completed two dribbles in the game which led to two goals winning a penalty but also creating the goal for Christian Eriksen's late move into the box so let's take a look at that right now and have a look at why having Rashford in those positions is so beneficial to Manchester United so we dive into the first goal at Manchester United scored. At this point we pick the play up as Bruno Fernandes cracks a shot from the edge of the box. I think one of the benefits of playing a 4-2-3-1 or the rotation is that players like Bruno Fernandes and Christian Eriksen are getting on the ball in deep areas and not leaving Casemiro on his own. In fact, in this move we see quite a lot of rotation with Casemiro in a high position, Eriksen making a run on the back line uh, anticipating the shot from Bruno Fernandes and Bruno deep striking at goal. This leads to a situation where United can win that uh, next ball obviously Anthony Martial receiving the ball and playing back to Rashford why United are so much more dangerous with Marcus Rashford in this position he's got a real ability to go both ways he can cut inside or he can hit the byline Nottingham Forest very much through the 90 minutes were trying to show Rashford down the line but again it didn't work out as Rashford's got that quality to beat a man in a 1v1 situation in this position he's got Serge Aurier 1v1 what I love about Marcus Rashford if you can just look at his orientation he's looking at the defender's feet. He's looking where the body balance is going to be, where the weight's going to be shifted to unbalance the defender and then explode on the outside. And he exactly does that in this situation. You can see with Rashford's feet, he's almost in that sprinter position. He's ready to explode, whereas the defender is very flat-footed, allowing Rashford to get on the outside and play a brilliant low cross into the box. And having Rashford in this position, going on the outside and playing it with his left foot low to the near post is a big reason why he should be starting ahead of someone like Ganacho. Ganacho of Eventually, we'll get to this age where his decision making will get to a point where he's going to make the right call every time. Rashford's obviously been at Manchester United playing at the top level since his introduction under.
under Louis van Gaal. He's got the road miles, he's got the years, he's made poor decisions in the past, but now we're seeing really good decisions. Beats Serge Aurier on the outside, low cross into the box, great finish on the outside of the boot from Christian Eriksen starting the comeback. Having Rashford back on the left wing is so beneficial for Manchester United. He brings real consistency to the flank. If we take a look at the penalty he won, obviously Bruno dispatched and United won the game. It was more consistency in terms of 1v1 decision making and beating a man. What I love about this one is it's very similar to that first goal where you can see Rashford facing up Danilo. You can see him again. He's making a little shimmy, he's throwing a little fake, but he's focusing on where Danilo is planting his body weight and then utilising that to beat in 1v1. You can clearly see that Danilo's got his outside foot planted, Rashford both feet in a sprinter position as well, easy to go past Danilo 1v1, and the contact comes as Rashford wins a penalty for United. And I think the big thing, there's been question marks over this penalty, and I really don't know why. For me, it's a clear penalty. From this angle, you can clearly see Danilo come across Marcus Rashford, clear contact, thigh on thigh, Rashford goes down, and he wins a penalty that Bruno dispatches. But I do think looking at the, the future of what United to do this season, Rashford has to start from the left-hand side. It's almost a non-negotiable. Rashford through the middle is obviously good when you know playing with another forward. We saw it last season with Veghorst. I like Rashford in a two-man partnership. But as a lone forward, I'd rather see him out wide on the left. His statistics against uh, Nottingham Forest was very, very good. Grabbed an assist, created two chances, including one big chance. Two shots, completed two of his three dribbles, won the penalty, but overall was super dominant and super tricky in those 1v1 situations, especially going on the outside, giving United a real chance to get back into the game. But as well, I think with Rashford on one flank, it means that you could play a player like Anthony or you could play a Ganacho. You know, Ganacho and Anthony are young forwards. And I think that's one of the big things that we've got to talk about now because there's been a lot of criticism. And I hear, you know, at times when I go to Old Trafford, a lot of moaning around Anthony, you know, go on the outside, make the run in behind the defence, pass the football more. And we need to slow ourselves down here because for me, Anthony is starting to do these types of things in a consistent way for Manchester United. And and yes, he's not at the level of uh, Marcus Rashford right now. But if you look at his, his age, 23 years old, he's not going to be consistent. It takes players time to grow and adapt to new leagues, but also get up to the level. You know, I think the big thing we've got to remember with Marcus Rashford, you know, he has basically just hit his peak. You know, last season, you'd say the season when he turned 25. You know, Anthony's got another two years before he gets to that point. And I remember all the criticism that Rashford got before taking the big step up last season, becoming more consistent. And it's just a natural thing with young players. So I think one of the big things that Manchester United fans need to do is start supporting Anthony. You know, he's receiving the ball. You know, he's doing things that I really like at the moment. You know, he's beating his man 1v1. He's getting his head up and playing the ball into the channel. But also, he's passing at the right time. He's running off the ball at the right moment. And he did it really well, creating a fantastic chance for Bruno Fernandes in the game against Nottingham Forest. So let's go and take a look at that right now. So actually, we're going to start this goal at the base of midfield. I just really enjoyed the build-up with this goal and the combination play for Manchester United. One of my big criticisms of United this season is the inability to play through the middle of teams and then go wide. You know, draw them in the middle and then spread it wide to create an opportunity to give a winger a 1v1 or an opportunity for an underlap, as we saw here. So Manchester United are picking the ball up deep in midfield with Casemiro. In terms of the, the shape, we can already see that Christian Eriksen is in a slightly deeper position than we saw Mason Mount in the first two games. Mason Mount would probably take more of an inside uh, left position, you know, goal side of the opposition's midfield line. With having not only Christian Eriksen in the team, but also Diogo Delo inverting, gave United a better base. But this build-up's really nice with Aaron Wan-Bissaka. So Casemiro working the ball out wide, wan -Bissaka receiving just in the opponent's half. But we've not seen this enough. And this is Manchester United manipulating the opponent's midfield line. We've got Bruno Fernandes uh, splitting the wide midfielder and the central midfielder. We've got Marcus Rashford in between the two centre mids. And Christian Eriksen goal side. wan -Bissaka has three options to play the ball to. We haven't seen this enough of. And it's something that we saw of United consistently last season under Eric Ten Hag. And it's just been at a lower level in the first two games. So that gives Aaron wan -Bissaka 
Saka lots of options on the ball, takes a really good option, dropping it into the feet of Marcus Rashford. We've got to take a bit of a moment though. Wamba Saka's really improved under Eric Ten Hag. We've already spoke about his attacking play and his use of underlaps and playing the inside channel being really good in previous weeks. But for, for me, he's also improved on the ball. This is a really good pass for him in, breaking the line between attacking midfield and wing back into the feet of Rashford. Rashford recycles the ball really cleanly, something that he does really well off the line. We've had a bit of rotation in positions in this move with uh, Anthony Martial operating on the left wing and Rashford operating in a false nine position. But as well, you've instantly got a bit of, uh, you know, support play for Casemiro when he receives. You know, the ball is on to Christian Eriksen. The ball could go back into Marcus Rashford's feet and he could turn. But he decides to utilise the switch of play out to Anthony that we've seen countless times, uh, you know, in their career together at Manchester United. What I like from this moment with Anthony, of course, the big thing that teams start to do with Anthony is they double up on him. But this opens up space. If United had a player that was operating in the inside right channel now, which I don't think they fill this space well enough at the moment, you know, Bruno Fernandes could pull, you know, into this sort of right channel uh, to make the underlap. You've got a big problem. And that's what Anthony brings. He almost brings a gravity to him. That's something that you can't really measure with statistics, something you have to measure with your eye. But players get drawn over to Anthony, which opens up bigger space elsewhere for, you know, for attacking midfielders to make the runs or for wingers or for midfielders to pick up the ball in deeper areas. We did see that actually in the goal um, you know, against Wolverhampton Wanderers where it was a bit of a set piece but Anthony pulled the players over, there was gravity there and opened up space for Bruno Fernandes to put the ball in for Wamba Saka if you remember but Anthony draws the two players over what I like about Anthony's dribbling is he really disbalances players as well, similar to what we saw with Marcus Rashford, there's a little step over, there's a little shimmy, he pulls the um, defender's weight to the outside drives on the inside, beats him really well. The other thing that we mentioned with that gravity, you know, number one, you got to deal with him when he's got the ball to feet you know 2v1 is an advantageous position for defenders opens up space but also on the dribble he's beating his man and you can see uh, the central midfielder is going to get pulled over which again opens up space for the pass you got a simple situation where you're going to utilize the ball and that is smart decision making he's beating his man 1v1 yes and previously, we'd see him beat the man again, but he's got his head up, simple ball to Marcus Rashford, going to be recycled to Aaron Wan-Bissaka. But from this position, we can see the three players that have been drawn in by Anthony. Three players through just carrying the ball, driving at the opposition and creating space for his teammates. wan is now free on the flank. Anthony now, head up football, demanding the ball into the channel. wan does oblige, plays it into the channel. Similar thing, going to disbalance the opposition by driving back onto that left foot and then exploding on the outside. A big criticism of Anthony is he doesn't use his right foot enough. I think quite frankly recently he's used his right foot quite a bit. These criticisms and these bias that we that's created by people that maybe not understand football, they need to be taken out because this is a moment where Anthony again chops onto that left foot, back onto the right foot, great low ball into the box and Bruno's a little unlucky with the finish. I think it's the right finish but he just misses the target. But there's Anthony, a great example of him using his right foot. He does do this. Anyone that pretends that he doesn't needs to start watching Anthony a little bit more. But also supporting Anthony. This is a move that he's very, very involved with. Receiving from Casemiro out wide, playing inside, making a great run off the ball, receiving from Wambasaka, beating his man again. You know, he's beaten that defender twice in this move. Great low cross into the box as well with his weaker right foot. You know, Anthony deserves some plaudits. And I think when we look at the statistics from the game as well, we want to give the analysis there, but also the information. Uh, Anthony created four chances in the game against Nottingham Forest, which was more than any other player on the pitch. He also had four shots, which was only bettered by Bruno Fernandes. We're not even talking about the classic Anthony chopping in and shooting, created, you know, two openings for himself, had two really good shots uh, that... Uh, Matt Turner saved well. But these are other moves. This is him really impacting United in an attacking sense. And we just need to uh, open our eyes to it. Anthony's going to be a good player for Manchester United. He just needs the support at the moment. You know, less groans, more support for Anthony. That's what I'd like to, 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 to sort of say. If there's, you know, we go back into the great wingers of Manchester United, Cristiano Ronaldo could be really, really frustrating to watch. Even when you go back to David Beckham or Ryan Giggs, they'd always try things in the final third and that's what you want them to do. So giving them the support and the freedom is a really important part. So let's talk set pieces. Manchester United were really exposed by Nottingham Forest in two set pieces. One being Manchester United's corner and the other one being a wide free kick. Let's take a look at this 
uh, corner first. Manchester United have been pretty poor from corners over the last probably three seasons where they've not scored enough goals in comparison to some of the best teams, Al Liverpool, Manchester City, Brentford and West Ham United. What I think United need to improve, number one, is I feel they need to underload the box in certain areas, but number two, their setup on the edge of the box is very, very poor and led to this Nottingham Forest opener. So Manchester United, in terms of this corner, Bruno Fernandes taking it from the left-hand side. It's going to be an in-swinger to the near post for Lisandro Martinez. I like the idea. I think there's a, you know, it's a good way of scoring goals, you know, getting to that near post and flicking the ball on. What United are trying in here is flicking the ball on at the near post and having bodies at the back post to finish finish off the move. You know, it's a classic way to beat a man or a zonal system. From a man perspective, you can create separation 1v1 as Alessandro did on the near post and then you've got players at the back post to win their aerial duels. Uh, so I like that. I like the methodology behind it. The part that I question though is that United have kind of overloaded the back post with bodies but they're all 1v1. What I would prefer in these situations and what I think is better is when you're looking for that near post flick on is that you underload the back post. So let's say what you do is you, you throw all your bodies to the near post. You know, Lisandro goes first, he works the near post flick on, but the rest of the bodies hit that back post. And then you have someone that starts on the front post that peels back and finishes off the move. That's what I would do in this set piece design. I don't like this because it gives you poor balance. Not only does it give you poor balance, but there's no one that's attacking the penalty spot, which again is a bit of a problem. The other issue with this setup is I absolutely hate this outside the box. You've got a fullback and two wingers. I think this is really, really poor from a defensive transitional perspective. You've got two players that are natural attackers that don't have that natural defensive awareness. Manchester United are loading the box with Diogo Delo and Lisandro Martinez versus loading the box with Anthony and Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford has worked so much on his heading in the last few years and it's, you know, coming up clutch. He scored more goals ahead last season than he's ever managed in a single campaign. Why is he not in the penalty area? I don't know. Which consequently would mean that you could play Diogo Delo, Wan-Bissaka and Lisandro Martinez as your three outside the box, which is going to give you much better balance. Not only that, is United setup is a little strange. Obviously, Delo is nice and high. That could be where Anthony's positioned. And you could have Marcus Rashford as that near close flick on. I don't understand why United aren't doing that. Instead of having the setup that we previously described as Anthony, wan and Marcus Rashford, it leads to these types of counter-attacking situations. But also, we mentioned before, there's no one attacking the penalty spot. I think this is absolutely criminal from a set from a set piece perspective that nobody is in that zone to deal with a, a knockdown a flick on a loose ball because simply Brennan Johnson gets there clears the volley and United have now got a problem so instead of United having two wingers defending this situation they'd have a potentially the two fullbacks I'd probably position Lisandro in that central position outside the box flanked with um you know the left back on the left side and the right back on the right side. So wan on the right side and Diogo Delo on the left side with Lisandro in the middle. I think that would allow United not number one to potentially win that first aerial duel that would be Lisandro Martinez up against uh, Morgan Gibbs-White instead of it being Aaron wan -Bissaka. But also in terms of the defensive awareness, Rashford just gets run off and I don't, I can't really blame him in this sense. I just don't, I wouldn't have him in this position. I think it's really bad from a tactical, you know, setup that you've got Rashford in a position where he's 1v1 with an attacker. You know, Know, naturally goes in to try and win the ball he doesn't it only breaks through and scores I just think it's really it's a really poor setup from United on the edge of the box and changing that to two fullbacks and Lisandro Martinez so in Rashford and Anthony into the box is just a much better setup for me and yes you can vary it if you've got set piece routines you know with Rashford dropping off to provide maybe a, a deep cross or Anthony doing that I just think right now this is the wrong setup and it costs United big against Nottingham Forest and that's something that they need to avoid because um, having Rashford and Anthony chasing back Iwoni versus having Juan Bissaka and Diogo Delo chasing back Iwoni, it's a completely different story. But let's move on to the second set piece. Again, I thought this was absolutely atrocious as well. Um, really bad from United in terms of their zonal adaptability. And that's a real key thing because zonal systems are really, really good, but you can expose them. You know, this is a simple one where uh, Willy Bolly basically uses Aaron Juan Bissaka to get in the way of Casemiro instead of reacting and changing your, your zonal set up and adapting to the situation. So we can see that wan is currently blocking Willy Bolly, you know, a key part of zonal defending. You block the opposition to have a free run on your zone, so the zone gets a free one run, so you can simply win the ball. It's, it's kind of like the simple way. You know, it's not man-marking, Aaron wan is not picking up Willy Bolly, he's trying to block him. But I think United need to work on the rules of this defensive line, because what Willy Bolly does is before the uh, set piece is taken, he moves into United's zonal setup. 
So for me, this causes United problem. Instead of Wan-Bissaka just dropping into the defensive um, you know, zonal line, adding another body in there. So instead of it being the, the five-man setup United have got with uh, you know the near post covered by two players, Casemiro sitting behind them, and then it being Rafael Varane and Diogo Delo, Wan-Bissaka could just join the line, um, have Casemiro in the front of Willy Bolly, uh, Wan-Bissaka behind, and you've got a new zonal setup. But the issue that United have is Wan-Bissaka kind of sticks to him. He start, sort of man marks him, and it's a bit weird in the sense of not only does it cause Casemiro problems, but it leads to the goal. And you can see that you know Wan-Bissaka from this position tries to attack the ball, completely misses it. We can see the back of his shirt. His orientation is completely wrong, and Nottingham Forest score a really, really sloppy goal. But simply, if you change that, to what I'm saying here, Aaron Wan-Bissaka joins the zonal line, sits behind Casemiro. Casemiro is in front of Willy Bolly. You probably don't concede this goal. And it's that type of in-game decision-making that needs to improve for Manchester United. So we take a look at the bad set pieces. Let's take a look at one of the really good ones. And this is Manchester United's uh, second goal against Nottingham Forest. Absolutely brilliant. The key players in this goal, of course, highlighted. Casemiro in the penalty area, Marcus Rashford, and of course, Bruno Fernandes. So what we're going to see from this move is a lovely ball out to Marcus Rashford. Bruno Fernandes arcing his run, bending it in, and then assisting Casemiro. What I like about this is it really catches Nottingham Forest cold. They're really unaware that Man United are going to pull something like this off. So the ball drops back to Marcus Rashford. Bruno starts his run. And again, you've got Brennan Johnson in a position um, that was in the wall, not defensively aware. You know, one of the situations we had with United, with Rashford and Anthony, United expose, uh, you know, a player that's not really defensive aware in the back line in Brennan Johnson. So as Rashford's brought the ball down, um, Bruno uh, makes his way into the box. What I like about this is that the patience that Bruno's got, you can clearly see that he's waiting for Marcus Rashford to, to shape, to play the ball in before he makes the run behind the back line, keeping himself offside. What I also like about this move as well, we can currently see, uh, you know, Casemiro adopting the role as a dead possum. Very tactical. He's playing dead. He's waiting for Nottingham Forest to switch off and then he's going to activate himself. Call this the zombie dead possum set piece routine. I think we'll give it the name there. But anyway, Bruno Fernandes is waiting for Rashford to play the ball into the box, curving his run waiting for the timing. Rashford with a brilliant dink ball into the box. Bruno continues his run. Simple head. The possum is no longer dead. He's turned into a zombie and Casemiro equalises for Manchester United, but a brilliant set piece. So as much as we've hammered United from a defensive set piece uh, situation, uh, they scored a really good goal from a really well-worked set piece that's definitely from the training ground. The thing that I want to see United do more of is do that more from set pieces from corners. As I mentioned, underloading areas, you know, using the wrap to the back post for one player that's starting on the near post, just being a little bit more creative in those situations because United can obviously pull it off. Well, this is a fantastic goal um, that, that Cass Samiro scores. It's just developing that from a corner position. So Manchester United, two wins out of three so far in the Premier League. Considering the two performances in the first two games, having six points out of nine is a pretty good return. I was far, far more impressed with Manchester United against Nottingham Forest. I think the return to the 4-2-3-1 at the moment has to happen. The players that United have got available right now, this system is much better. It gives United much better balance. They progress the play and they get the ball to dangerous wingers in the right moments. United are building through this season. Obviously, a big game up against Arsenal. There's still, you know, time in a transfer window. United need to buy a defensive midfielder, a number eight, and potentially sign a left back before the window closes. There's a lot of work to be done behind the scenes to allow Eric Ten Hag the best position he can. You know, players like Amrabat available for £21 million, you know, selling Kovar and Fred, that is £21 million. United need to start acting like a big team and back Eric Ten Hag. That is the big one. But overall, I think Ten Hag has done really well in these opening three games to get six out of the nine points available. Two really poor performances to start the season off, but some impressive, impressive parts of the game against Nottingham Forest after coming from two goals down. Uh, it's all about getting Marcus Rashford on the left wing, United having balance in the centre of the park, and we'll see United back into the Champions League very, very soon. But anyway, guys, I've been Satman Dave. This has been the Premier League Review. Of course, subscribe if you are new, and get into the comments below. Who would you sign before the window closes for Manchester United.